Uh, we're talking relationships. Very often, well, sometimes you get married and there's always a pressure from the society, but especially also from the in-laws about you uh, needing a child in the next few months. And if that very child doesn't come, there's trouble. And in Ghanaian parlance, they say there's wahala. I think even in Nigeria and Sierra Leone, the parlance there, oh, this will be acceptable. But often, do you think that you need to stay in a childless marriage? And even that leads in many times to divorce. Do you think divorce is also acceptable in the realm of Christianity? And um, we're talking to a uh, marriage counselor as well as a marriage pastor and a normal pastor as well, Reverend George Lutrot, always speaking on marriage, sex, sexual reproductive health, and other issues. And here's my guest in the <laughs> studio. Thank well you for joining me. And you're having a seminar. It's called the MNM 2014. 2014. What's MNM? I must marry and maintain. <laughs> 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 you must marry and maintain. And maintain. Mm. So people must learn how to marry and mm. how to maintain the marriage, not endure and not keeping up appearances. That's not what we're talking about. So this year we are discussing is divorce permissible? Is it avoidable? At what stage can one even decide to have a will? I will men for dead people. The lawyer, lawyer for example, is going to be in the place with me. And he's also going to discuss extensively about uh, contraceptives. People are getting a lot of unwanted pregnancy, and they tell you they don't know what happened. I see pregnancy is an airborne disease. So I want to help people to be careful and know that pregnancy is not an airborne, it's not Ebola, it's not Corella, but it is by a means of some particular thing. And those people who are sleeping with people's husbands and they don't know what to do, now people are praying for people's wives to die, to come and marry them. I can just imagine a young girl of 32 praying that their wife should die. So every time I go to church, God, you see me, I'm still single. And some are trapping men with pregnancy. It's not a trap per se because for men, we are vulnerable. Anywhere you put what God gave us, the vulnerable asset, it will misbehave. So you see, this is one of the reasons why I want to gather the divorce are invited, those who are about to divorce, those who are contemplating divorce, those who are struggling to marry and they don't know what to do, those who are having challenges in their office, especially occupation hazard. Your boss every night wants to do something before we go home. You want to get promotion and they want you to do four rounds before promotion. All of you are invited and those of you who are married and are keeping up appearance, walk to the place, Aviation Social Center, just the Saturday. If you don't have a child in marriage and you have been abused, you walk and let's help you out. What time is it? It's starting from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. But it, it's an interesting topic that you're, 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 you're going to discuss at yeah. the event. But uh, at, at which point do you think you need to say, well, this is the time I got married and so this is the time I need for myself. We live in a day where uh, there are a lot more people, couples who are professionals, they marry and they would want 10 years before they give birth to their first child. And that also t tend to create a certain dilemma because we live in an African society. Good. Thank you so much. You know, uh, specifically in Africa, when you marry, the top up is childbirth. And you see that can pal and they'll tell you, yeah, now when I'm in Tubedin, you know, that style, I mean, they tell you, now send a hoot say Roland, come on, come on, wash us so you baby say. You know, that's the thing. Yeah, I mean, and they frustrate your wife when they walk to the house and say, call, 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 eh, me basem, me do kunu kasa, oh, mba chok me bow, eh, eh, transika kala. Nye wuna wuhona mba eh, me basem, me do nipa kasa wufi ha. I mean, that is some of the frustration you go through. Here comes the two of us have decided, husband and wife, that we only give birth after 10 years because you're working. That one is our decision. And that can be made known clearly to the immediate family that will bring frustration and headache, and even in church. But we have stages where we have not even planned to have children after 10 years. But the childbirth is not coming. That's what the issue is. If childbirth is not coming, we've gone to do all necessary checks. And you realize that the fault is not from you as a woman. And it's not from the man. Then that is where you stand to fight the public. Number two, we come back again. The fault is not from you, the man. But it's from the man. It's from the woman, sorry. Then that is where the issue becomes a challenge. I don't want you to stay in that marriage and frustrate somebody's daughter and call her names and let everybody laugh at her. She collects somebody's child in church and they say, Hey, who can call us if we're you? Now, so you're not called here. If you are going through any frustration, any mishandle in marriage because you don't have a child, for me, I say, Walk out. Often, especially on this very subject, you're sounding very much controversial. And even like these televangelists you find on social media a, a, from America who tend to go against the norm that's, that's, that says if you are not satisfied, you can seek a divorce. But the Bible clearly is against divorce, is it? 
No. I don't know where you read that. I don't know where you read that. I don't know. And I think people will say again, this madman is in the studio again. Because they say I have a mental problem. I hear people writing on Facebook. But I think, let's get it straight. The Bible says that it is not for better and for worse. Get it straight. Marriage is for better. There's no worse in the Bible. So, the, for better and for worse is what we could note it as a binding statement. Marriage is not a vows, but it is the understanding of two people being released by their parents. That's marriage. So now here's the case. The disciples asked Jesus Christ, why did Moses say, give your wife certificate of divorce? He says, because of the hardness of the heart. Roland, if a man's heart is hardened, where is punishing a woman and telling the woman, we will see whether you can still live in this house. Where, when it's time for sexual issues between husband and wife, the first thing he does is to take a hot bump, insert it into a private part of the wife, where a man will tie your hands to the bed as a sign of punishment, where a man has made it on You're talking about abuse. After, yes. And this one, the church say, stay. Where a woman has left you after marriage and gone to America to seek for greener pastures and is having every fun he wants to have, the church say, stay. Don't go because God hates divorce. Where a man has married you after two weeks, he's gone to UK. And the next time you hear is that, honey, the place is not easy at all. Because of contract marriage, I married this woman, and all of a sudden, I don't know what happened. No. He says, you have a child for me. And, you are saying, and you're saying these are pointers and yeah. uh, for which... A couple, one of them need to make a decision. Hardness of heart has come up there, and mm. divorce must be granted. But because people must go to heaven and not go to hell. Again, this is a very controversial subject. I, I, you say so. Mm. I don't know. And about these that. are controversial statements, from Ruth. But it's from the Bible. Right. The, where lies the case in point, where in many of the contemporary and even orthodox, um, so to speak, preachings about marriage, mm -hmm. and even these days, weddings or statements in counseling sessions tend to give the indication that we need to have a lot more consensus in marriage. Consensus? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Mm. Well, in life, even standing here this morning with you is a sacrifice. But I choose to sacrifice, brother. Do you understand? I'm sacrificing for the survival of people who are watching us for this content we're giving them. So in marriage counseling, we don't push you to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. We sit our somewhere, the local language, then you bring some man, say, this man say he won't marry me. Me, I have nothing to do than to let you know the whims and caprices, the end of the road, because I have seen the end of the road of the marriage. Because the cause of divorce is never what happens in marriage. It's what happens before the marriage. There's nothing that can bring you and your wife to divorce grounds if that thing is not repeated in marriage. So when you come to us in counseling, it is not for us to tell you that, oh, uh, this one is bad, a uh, sacrifice, and then there's, no, no, please. The altar doesn't alter you, brother. So when you come and there are pointers that shows that you want to marry this young man and there is nothing like compatibility between two of you, the best thing we do is to advise you to work out. You understand? People get to the altar and they're already pregnant. And you expect that marriage to work? Check the records. You have the right to change your mind last minute at the altar. But here's the case, you are pregnant. Can you change your mind? You can't change your mind because you've already made a decision. So for me, I'm saying that many believe that it's better for you to endure marriage and go to hell than to make sure that what is disturbing you, cut it off and focus on your process of going to the best place because endurance is not meant to kill you. Mm. It's meant to toughen you up. All these things you're saying, yes. how is it situated in the Bible? It's biblically from Genesis to Revelation. You can see it clearly stated there. The marriage is not meant for small boys. It's meant for men. That's what I'm saying. That if you're 62 years old, you're not married, you're a boy. Because it's not good for a man to be alone. So if you think you're matured enough to feed yourself three times last snack and provide shelter, then go in for somebody that you can feed to. And you know somebody you can beat. You understand? People never understood when I said that when we come to the house and your wife is working, you're working. The money for your wife is for her and your money is meant to keep the house. You understand? Now we are role players. That's why women are competing now. You are told to pay water bill, electricity bill. Husband will pay student uh, uh, school fees and then pay mortgage. So it is shared in the house. So your wife must compete. That's why most women today, they are sleeping out there to beef up their, their allowances and leaving the house and leaving the children at home, raising poultry farm at home, chasing about degrees and masters so that we can beef up the salary to be able to pay the mortgages at home. Ladies and gentlemen, marriage is not meant to be sold. If you think the heat is too much and it's suffocating you to die, 
seek for redress mm. by working out and seeking for divorce. It is not a case. How are the exigencies of the current times, the contemporary world, which gives uh, a, a lot more pressure or puts a lot more pressure on, on young couples, especially when we have a certain generation that is said to be um, a growing middle class? I don't know what that means, though. Uh, how, uh, how do all those variables tend to put a lot more pressure on couples? Thank you. Uh, Roland, there are no pressure on couples. That's the thing. The truth is that there's no pressure. There's pressure. No. We are creating <laughs> we are pressure. Yes, Oh, yeah, you are creating pressure. We are creating pressure for ourselves. No, we are creating pressure for ourselves. A young man who you realize that you have not finished dealing with your singleness, you have not fully enjoyed your singleness, why do you go to become double? That's mm. the first thing. It means that we have the time that you can go into marriage. So don't use your school going age to go and find yourself in marriage. You are doing national service. How much are you paid? I think it has been increased slightly to have been 300 or so, 280 or something now. It's gone up small slightly. Then once you're doing national service, you have intent to marry. I mean, where is that coming from? A young man who just completed school. So you're saying that as, as a people, as young people, we need to be realistic. That you, better, that's the right word. We need to be realistic and be fooled. We get fooled before we marry. We don't marry half and half. We marry full, full. So I come in with a full Well, you, have, you have to be ambitious enough, is that not it? That, yes, and you have a 10-year development plan before you think of marriage. But current ladies and guys who have come today, they don't have 10 years uh, uh, plan to marry. Mm. They okay. marry and then in it where they get. So what if, as a man or a woman, the beginning of your 10th year is at the age of 28? Oh, how can you, your 10th year begin at 28? No, you never know. Somebody may have had a late education. Okay. Somebody may have been ambitious enough because of the background he's coming from. Okay. We want to pursue other things okay. before beginning the 10th okay. year. So what happens? No, if your 10-year development plan starts at 28, then you marry at 38. Within 28 to 38, okay. that's where you... The person too is worried that I'm going to give birth to kids who are going to be young when I'm old. Thank and you. And all that. Now, who, if you enter into marriage earlier, you leave early. Anybody who marries early, leaves the marriage early. Because immaturity comes up there. Children don't marry. So I'm saying that 28 years, are you gainfully employed? No, I rather want to look for employment properly, secured. Then based on that, I move ahead to marriage. Then thinking of, I want to have babies early, so that when I'm 62, my child will not be four years old. I agree with you, fine. But you have what it takes to take care of a child at 28, or a child to suffer because of you. Can we really be realistic and think of ourselves properly so that things will go ahead with all of us? But I believe that currently our lifestyle is all about ourselves. After all, let's make the money, and the money will take care of the children at home. That is not the secret. So childless relationship. It's not always the fact that man must stay in and die. If the conducive atmosphere is created for you, your husband is supporting you, everybody says it's okay, let's give to God. Then they believe that they are giving it to God and you can stay. Where the man will not leave the house and go and bring a child because you can't give birth. Where the woman will not go and pass somewhere and get pregnant on your behalf, then stay. But have, if not, have, you, have, you, have you had experiences in, in your, your interactions with various couples of people who have been in marriages? and have decided to stay on even though they're childless and have at the end of the day seen that at the end of the lifetime the other the other partners may have had children elsewhere yes i have many stories like that mm. i mean i just had one uh, just two weeks ago how does that have a toll it's a on big a it becomes a big 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 problem on a couple because the, uh, the last story i had a woman is rather uh, rather con the woman is contending that this child is not for the husband so we are just having a DNA. Because the, the husband woman, can't produce. The woman knows that the husband cannot. And that is why she has stayed in this marriage for 12 years. She is capable of producing, but knows the husband cannot produce. And they just brought a child home that this husband did. And she says that she wants to go for a DNA because she believes that this is not from the husband. I mean, that's, that's how protective a woman can be. And she has stayed in this thing. Although she, come, she has everything correct, she has stayed in it quietly and want to stay in the marriage and want to defend the husband. We have other ones too that they go and bring and come and give them. Uh, as for it, uh, I be man will go and impregnate uh, an Ashanti man and bring the child to a girl man to name. So the child is going. The child must be called Fakbu, but now it's called Hogbe Toto because this is the wrong semen that has been, I mean, this is the wrong thing that has been given to you. You are growing in a wrong image with wrong identity. This is what I say, let's avoid. Work out. So you are saying capacity. that, well, before the end of a lifetime that the system should have taken on early yes before mm. you go if you know you can't go through this meal don't stay and punish somebody's daughter or somebody's son walk out and have fresh air it's okay. better right. it's better my brother okay well, we're going to open the phone lines and uh, the numbers soon will be on your screens but 
um, the, the numbers are 0302116912, or 2, I believe. And so uh, 0302116912. Or 2. And so those are the numbers we have there. Please call in. But uh, again, the event is where? Aviation Social Center, this Saturday. We're starting from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. And we are discussing, is divorce permissible? Is it avoidable? This is what we're discussing. Is it avoidable? Is it permissible? Mm. So if it's avoidable, mm. I have to marry and maintain. So mm. what can I do mm. to avoid Are divorce? you giving out tickets this morning? Yeah, we'll give some tickets out. Mm. So how I mean, many? Fair, uh, let's give them five. Five. Five will be cool. I I mean, the, the are you selling? Cost. How much is the ticket going? It's, only, it's not a ticket. It's a token of 20 Ghana cities. Uh, so a token of 20 to come and get a lot more wisdom. We have um, Robert from BA. Robert. Yeah. Good, uh, morning. Uh, good morning, please. Reverend Lutrot is here. I don't. Yeah, I, I, I don't counsel on marriages. Good so morning. Yeah, good he's morning, the one boss. you have to speak to. Good morning, Lutrot. Good morning, boss. Uh, 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 the, the, the only popcorn counselor in town. <laughs> 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 How did you get that name? Well, the popcorn boy said you. Know, you, know what, you know what? You know what? I have been looking for a single reason. Um, uh, crucify the choice, but I can't get any. <laughs> it's just that he is realistic, honestly. You see, um, with this metropolitan and municipal Ghana we are living, wow. that <laughs> is the way things should go. Now, don't you forget that uh, the, uh, the Bible as it said wasn't in an environment like this. You understand that? Mm. No man will, like he cited an example. No woman will leave a husband at the house, go out there, get pregnant with a certain man, and bring the child to You understand me? So mm. this is what is happening. So things like that, yes, we need to get it. Last time I was, I, I was watching you, in, I was watching you at uh, TV Africa when two guys call and they never had it. Easy. I don't want yeah. it to go it's down there. Okay. But We're in the way, all <laughs> said and <laughs> all said and done, you know what? Um, we have to also accept the fact that there are exceptionalities. You understand? All right. In as much as I believe that I need to be realistic, I don't always take the God factor out. Thank because you. there are some cases where you have a divine intervention of which you will never expect. Hallelujah. You understand? Hallelujah. But that wouldn't be a ground for you to say, say this thing. Okay, so Robert, uh, you are in Based for... A, you, hello, hello, Robert. Yeah, yeah uh, I'm, I'm with you. So for you, you think that couple need to be realistic even though of course there's the god or and the element factor of divine intervention more even to say in our society as we live now we need to be realistic you thank you very much robert because and next we have to speak to elijah elijah you're calling us from tamale i wish that many of you will call here from Accra so that we can give you the tickets for you to come and attend oh. the event at the aviation social center elijah hello. you are on hello good, good morning Please speak to morning. Reverend. Mm. Morning, let's go. Yes, please, Mr. Albert. I really enjoy the program. Thank you. But my, yes, but my problem is um, as married couples, I think the resources, in, even in the Bible, it says that we should always come together as one, and the resources should always, at least, it shouldn't, there shouldn't be any secrecy between both couples. In this extent, so if I'm a worker and a uh, my wife is not working and maybe not even educated. And uh, we should come together. We have come together as one. Can we, can I, is there situations whereby if this woman should tell me that she, I uh, always leave money, then if the money gets finished, then she thinks that probably I'm going out and start to suspect me, and uh, which I don't think I do. Do I still have to stay with this woman, or do you think I can quit in the relationship, in the marriage? I mean, mm. are you are you in such a situation? Sorry, are you in such a situation, or is it just a hypothetical scenario you're drawing up? No, no, no. I'm in such a situation. Right. Okay. So just stay. Well, I'll we'll, we'll definitely you. put my number across to have details about this. But I keep saying that you don't marry people who are liabilities. You don't marry people you think they are children. As a matter of fact, if a man is well secured and you're you are taking care of your house properly. A woman's money will not mean anything to you. It will not be a pressure to you. So I understand where it's coming from. If you marry a woman who is not working, Roland, it is not an easy thing though. Although her money is not part of running the home, at times it, it looks more lovely when your wife goes up and comes. But the two are not one. Shall be one. 
So we're still individuals in marriage. Well, in the constitution, shall shall means that it's it's by compo it's compo it's it's compelling. It's compelling, but in, not in, compulsory. In, in, in the human constitution. But it's compelling, not, not compulsory. Well, uh, we have um, Pastor Harrison. You're you're calling us from where in the Volta region? Pastor Harrison. Hello. Why are you calling us from the Volta region? Uh, specifically, Keta. Okay, Keta, please. Please, please go on. Yes, Make your contributions. I, 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 I believe that it's because we are not fulfilling the purposes of marriage. Because marriage in a sense is... Oh, we seem to have... Uh, oh. the, the purposes of marriage, Pastor, has gone off. And so we have Rejoice. Joyce Lynn. Yes, sir. Where are you? Where are you calling from, uh, madam? I'm calling you from Dunkwa Nothing. Dunkwa Nothing. Oh, it means you, you can't get my ticket. Okay. And um, please, your contributions for Reverend Mitra yeah, to take I want a look. Yeah, I know if um, he's a Reverend Minister. Yes, I want to ordain Reverend Minister. Oh, very good. It's it's by time that people like this come out to say the truth to us. So I agree perfectly with <laughs> what um, he's saying. I've been watching his program, but I never knew he's a reverend. I thought he's just a counselor. No, I'm not just a counselor. He's called Reverend George Lutros. <laughs> reverend George Lutros. So okay. pa Pastor Lutros okay. will be fine. God bless you for telling us the truth. Thank you for taking the truth and welcome hey, the truth. Hey, rejoice from Dunkwa on Nothing. Thank you very much, Rejoice. And um, uh, we have a next caller on the line. H Hello? Okay, so, so we have to continue the discussion. But yeah. uh, the, the gentleman from um, Tamale, Tamale yeah. mm, uh, raised uh, an issue, and, and you were trying to address it. Yes, I'm saying, you know, Rola, I think we're going to get an opportunity to talk about if your wife is not working or any more than you, what mm. should you do in a relationship? What I'm saying is that if you marry somebody, I say 10 years development plan. Today, Roland, you are here. Your face will be on TV. You have to choose your wife who will understand faces on TV. That's true. You understand? So that you don't get home and you are told that the way you are talking today, I don't like. If you think this is going to be on TV, henceforth, come and sit home. Most women today are sitting home. They are getting from, from the, the employment that they have fought for in their whole life. They are stopping it because a husband says so. Let okay. We have Frank from Tema. Uh, my first ticket goes to you, Frank. Wherever you are, please try and drive by our studios at Multi TV and try and get a ticket to the M&M &M 2014 Marriage counseling session is taking place at the Viesin Social Center tomorrow from 1 p.m. And uh, what's your contribution? Okay, thank you, Roma. Uh, Roland, uh, this is Frank Collins from Tema. Okay. Uh, but I normally uh, mo uh, watch uh, Reverend on the TV always, but then today uh, it blew my mind. So that's what I can say. Mm. But then uh, I just want to thank him for what he has been for Mother Jana. I hope I'm married two years now, so um, I'm not facing any problem. But I keep go on monitoring his movement and mm. his teaching and everything. So uh, I hope uh, I'll be there tomorrow. But yeah, and uh, please come for the tickets uh, here at Multi TV, Fun of First Street, Kokumemle, Accra. Uh, but uh, I would want to ask you. Uh, some say his views are are, are too um, antichrist. No, not necessarily antichrist. <laughs> That's what they say now. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Controversial. Controversial. I think controversial will be fine. <laughs> um, what, what do you say about it? I think, uh, uh, you know, as a nature, we, we, we manage it like that. And God, God, some of us keep on believing in God and praying. So I think no comment about that. Okay. Thank you very much, Frank. And uh, you're calling from Tema. Please pass, pass by the studios of Multi TV and try and get. Um, the ticket for the show tomorrow. Uh, Moses, you're calling us from WA. Thanks for joining us. And what's your comment? Good morning. And I want to say hello to Reverend. Hi, I've Moses. I've actually been following his program for some time now. Thanks to the media. But mm. today I have a disagreement with uh, something he said. He said at 28, you are not ready to marry. Um, 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 I, I beg to differ. You know, uh, Reverend, what you would need to get settled for marriage might be different from somebody. Somebody finishes school, let's say, at 24 years, he, he's out of the university, he probably starts working at 25. The 10 years thing you are talking about is, 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 is relative. 
Mm. And I, I don't actually want to go by that. I need 10 years to plan fine. Depending on what you're looking out for and what you want to get before you get into, into, into marriage. So what you would need before you settle down might be different from somebody. Somebody might need four or five years to plan. Mm. So that aspect is something that uh, I want to disagree with you today. Thank I you. wish you good morning. Okay. I think the correction is that I say everybody needs a 10 year development plan before you marry. You didn't say that the person needs no, 10 you need years. No, 10 years. So within your 10 year development plan, you know you should I have know I'm going to be on TV. I'm, no, I'm going to be a star if God blesses me. So which wife can I choose? Because people have gotten to the hierarchy now and they want to change their wives. Because, look, if you have a staff who wins an award and doesn't come with a wife to take the award, there's a problem at home. Because during the interview, the person will go, oh, that's a wife, madam. Hey, how have you been supporting your husband? <laughs> oh, Roland's wife doesn't speak English. I mean, where does the wife work? It's a serious thing. I mean, it's a serious thing. I've met yeah. people who are in the very big places and their wives cannot follow them. And so they have something that follows them. No wives. So something follows them. They go to big gardens and they come with things. You're very realistic. You just speak it. Oh, we should tell them the truth, baby. <laughs> <laughs> like this Friday, somebody is watching us in a hotel, but the hotel room is filled by somebody, something. And the wife is at home. If you are qualified to go with your wife, you travel with your wife. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm proud, of, Friday, I'm proud of the wife I work with. So when, I, when she's going, she goes before me and I follow because the machine in front is good, baby. Okay. So, um, again, give us uh, the time, the, the event, and then the venue. The event is I Must Marry and Maintain. The venue is Aviation Social Center, and the time is 1 p.m., and it's just a token of training. Ghana okay, citizens. if they want to contact? 0277. The president has his number. I was shocked. Okay. You Thanks to you all. Zero two seven seven six zero nine six four four. Zero two seven seven sixty ninety six forty four. Please come. Don't die in a dying relationship. Walk out there. Don't die in a dying relationship, please. Walk out. Get fresh air. Have salvation. Go to heaven. Because in heaven, God is waiting for you in peace. Not in pieces. And for you who are abusing the women sexually and everything, I'm waiting for you there to pass by. Saturday, 20th of September, is live at the Asian Social Center. Okay, thank you, Reverend. Reverend George Lutrot, and uh, is a marriage counselor, but also a marriage pastor, and speaks on anything the Bible. We're taking a